To my beloved brethren and God's holy people across the globe, welcome to another program in the series, A Word to the Nation broadcast. I am Pastor Carol Wilson, your humble servant, and I encourage you to spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule and allow the Lord to speak to your hearts. In the period that I grew up in Jamaica, the use of Proverbs was a big part of our culture. In many societies around the world, especially the elderly, would use some idiom that would pass on a wise comment or teach a valuable lesson in a nutshell. Good morning to all my brothers and sisters across the globe. There are some well-known proverbs that you might be familiar with. Proverbs like, not all that glitter is gold. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bushes. A picture is worth a thousand words. Better safe than sorry. But there's a proverb that rests on my mind, my thoughts this week as I read a verse of Psalm 34. And so this morning's theme is, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And my passage of meditation is from Psalm 34 verse eight, which says, taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the person who takes refuge in him. Just as I was about to prepare this week's broadcast, I was listening to a YouTube video sent to my phone, recorded by former US President Ronald Reagan, saying that for a long time, he had problems understanding the atheist in a world of so much beauty and that he had an unholy desire to invite some atheists to a dinner and serve the most fabulous gourmet dinner that had ever been prepared. And then after the dinner, he would ask them if they believed there was a cook. I found that brief account very humorous but profound. The proof of the pudding is in the eating is a very old proverb. The Oxford Dictionary of Quotations dated back to the early 14th century, albeit without offering any supporting evidence for that assertion. You might have a lot to say about the chef's pudding good or bad, but not until you get a slice for yourself and sink your teeth into it, engaging your taste buds. Only then will you be able to testify from your own experience concerning the taste of that pudding. David knew the Lord from a very tender age. He did not have to rely on other person's opinion. He declared in the same Psalm 34, I will continually bless the Lord. His praise will always be in my mouth. He said, I have all reason to boast in the Lord. The humble ones will be joyous when they hear my utterance of the Lord. Join me in proclaiming his greatness. Let us exalt his name together. From my own experience, I sought the Lord and he responded to my petition and rescued me from all my fears. Generally speaking, those who look to him will always experience joy and they will never be ashamed. David said this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. 
He further testified that God sends his guardian angels to remain, to abide, to encamp around whoever fears him, and he rescues them. So he says, based upon all those positive experiences, David would agree that the proof of the pudding would be in the eating. And so he says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the person who takes refuge in him. God is good because he loves us and wants what is best for us. His goodness is demonstrated through his actions towards us. In fact, we see evidence of God's goodness every day. We see it in the sun rising each morning, in the rain falling from the sky, and in the flowers blooming in our gardens. We should thank God for every good gift we receive from Him and ask Him for what we need. God is a gracious Father giving good gifts to His children. These gifts include healing, protection, peace, joy, strength, wisdom, and many other blessings. God has given us so much more than we deserve. He sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins, and he raised him from the dead. This means that we no longer need to fear sin or death. Instead, we can live with confidence knowing that God will take care of us. David again in Psalm 31, 19 to 22 says, How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. In the presence of everyone, you have acted for those who take refuge in you. You hide them in the protection of your presence. You conceal them in a shelter from human schemes, from quarrelsome tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his faithful love to me in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. But you heard the sound of my pleading when I cried to you for help. In verse 5 of Psalm 100, David said, For the Lord is good, and his faithful love endures forever, his faithfulness through all generations. Again, our key texts advise us to taste and see. If you are not acquainted with this Jesus, come taste and see. If you feel you need unconditional love, come taste and see. If you are turned off by people's condemnation of you and desire someone to love and accept you for who you are, come taste and see. If you are experiencing overwhelming situation of whatever sort and need a miracle worker, come taste and see. We know the importance of a resume. It lists the qualifications of an individual that makes them suitable for a task or a job. And in Psalm 145, 1 to 21, David seemed to roll out the resume of our God and his unique attributes. He says, I exalt you, my God, the King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you every day. I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is great and is highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. I will speak 
of your splendor and glorious majesty and your wondrous works. They will proclaim the power of your awe-inspiring acts, and I will declare your greatness. They will give a testimony of your great goodness and will joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and great is in faithful love. The Lord is good to everyone. His compassion rests on all he has made. All you have made will thank you, Lord. The faithful will bless you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom and will declare your might. Informing all people of your mighty acts and of the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule is for all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his actions. The Lord helps all who falls. He raises up all who are oppressed. All eyes look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hands and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all his acts. The Lord is near all who call out to him, all who call out to him with integrity. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry for help and save them. The Lord guards all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth will declare the Lord's praise. Let every living thing bless his holy name forever and ever. If you put your trust and confidence in this or God, you will be forever blessed. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. You don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. Until you turn your love to Jesus Christ. You don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing.
Thank you for joining us today for a Word to the Nation broadcast, B142. This is your brother and friend, Carol Wilson, saying, Have a happy Sabbath, a fantastic day, and may the God of heaven bless you real good. Peace and love to you all.